But honey, they make them for women. <laughs> Cycling budget time of the year. We are in March. It is time to start allocating funds to that one hobby that we love oh so dearly. How do we do it? How do we calculate those funds? How do we come up with that magic number? Do we do it? Or do we just shoot from the hip and purchase, purchase, purchase away throughout the course of the year to get ready for the cycling season? What do we need? What do we want? What can we do without? And how much is it gonna cost? I apologize for the way I look today. I'm not too sure what's going on. I think I always look like this when I come back from the grocery store. Yeah, a little worse for wear. Rode hard and put away wet. Budgets, do we have a budget? Do you stick to it? So uh, I come at this from two sides. One approach is past Maddie. This is when there was no budget. Sure, you know, I'm kind of constrained by the amount of money I have in my bank account. I'm not one of those people who like to live in debt. I'm constrained by the money that is in my bank account. But I used to buy stuff quite often without giving it too much thought as to what I was missing out on non-cycling related. On the other side, the other approach I would take, say, okay, let's give myself for sake of argument, $5,000. I'm gonna give myself $5,000 and that's what I'm gonna spend to get ready for the cycling season or that's what I'm gonna spend over the duration of the cycling season. Now, when I talk about cycling season here in Ottawa, I'm gonna put it between April and November. So anywhere in that time frame, that's the money I'm gonna spend. Now, of course, you do get creepage, a little bit of expenditure over the winter months as you know, it keeps you involved in the hobby a little bit and it gets you ready for 2025, the next season. Don't get me wrong, I love to spend money on cycling stuff, but I also like to spend money in other areas. So I can't spend all my extra income just on cycling. I need to spread that around a little bit. But I'm sure the majority of you have had conversations that go a little bit like this. So I'm um, thinking about a new bike. Another one? Okay, how much is that? It shouldn't be too expensive. I think maybe um, $2,000. Uh, come again? Is that the real price or the Maddie price? Okay, if not a new bike, then how about a, how about a new pair of shoes? You know I need those. Uh, no, absolutely not. Did you see Rafa released a new set? It's so hot. Uh, no. But honey, everyone has them. But honey, these are blue. But honey, I can save 10 grams. But honey, they'll make me faster. But honey, you want me to have the best. But honey, the pros ride them. But honey, they make them for women as well. I'll get you a pair. Don't you already have one of those? Or two? Three? Six? Ha <laughs> ha! Come on. We've all had those conversations. Even with our significant other, or internally, the devil and the angel, right? The devil saying on one shoulder, yeah, go for it, man. Angel, the voice of reason. Yeah, maybe you want to think about that a little bit. Yep, budgets. Cycling expenditures. So the way I break it down is, there's things that you really need, right? Chains, inner tubes, tires, sometimes cassettes, bar tape maybe, shifter cables, all those things. But once in a while, it's okay to splurge on something that you don't really need. Like a Cafe du Cycliste winter jacket. Or Pan Normal Studios bib shorts. Totally impractical, totally overpriced, but damn, super sexy. It's okay once in a while, right? Spend away, my friends, within reason. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy this marvelous hobby that we have. It's so good for so many reasons. Anyways, that's a wrap. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. We will regroup. Hi. We got a good one for you next week. 
and then I'm off to uh, San Diego and hopefully it will be a little warmer than this. Take care.